Hey, what's up guys? Got the new Dynalink Mesh Wi-Fi 6E system. So I'm gonna unbox this thing, review it, do all my speed tests with my iPhone 14 Pro Max Wi-Fi 6 device, and in combination of my Galaxy S23 Ultra and Pixel 7 Pro, which are my Wi-Fi 6E devices. We can see that they're both working together to create a single larger network to increase your Wi-Fi coverage throughout, which is basically what a Mesh Wi-Fi does. It looks like the Wi-Fi 6E is used as a backhaul channel, so I'm expecting pretty good wireless backhaul speeds, and we got a whole bunch of specs right here. Looking inside, welcome, let's get started. So we got some instructions, how to connect it and stuff, good to go there. So we got some LED indicators for the system itself. We got a WAN LAN port and another LAN port. So both of these are gigabit ports. We have a reset switch and the power and good to go there. It's a button up here too, I'm not sure what that does, but so we have the power adapter, it is 100 to 240 volts, and this is what it looks like. We have a Cat5e Ethernet cable, and we have another one. So it's been about two weeks since I've unboxed this thing, using as my main mesh system, and so far so good. So no drops, nothing abnormal. Performance is actually pretty good considering the price of this thing. I have all those numbers here, speed test range, just everything, using the same devices as I mentioned during the unboxing. Now there is one thing worth mentioning. During my testing, when I was switching between wireless and wired backhaul, I would power cycle on the secondary one, do my testing, all my Wi-Fi devices worked, my phone devices worked, everything was working. However, the Dynalink app froze, and so I restarted the mesh system, uh, put it back in, it was still frozen, and I basically uninstalled the app, installed the app, and that didn't fix it. I tried it both on iOS and on Android. In fact, I tried it on all three phones and same issue. So what fixed it for me was that I went to the inside settings. You could basically delete the memory and the, and the cache uh, for this thing. So when I did that, it basically unblocked it and let me go further. It still didn't work, but all you had to do was basically, once you clear the memory and the cache, you just restart it one more time and you should be good to go. So jumping into the internet speed test, no matter how fast any mesh system is, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds. For me, that would be 940 megabits per second download and 880 megabits per second upload. Now this mesh system is fast enough to handle those speeds because of the gigabit ports on this thing. When I'm connected via ethernet uh, from my computer to this thing, I do those speed tests, no problem. I get those full speeds as always. Now, Wi-Fi devices are typically a different story. Looking at the results, we could see there is a drop in speeds for Wi-Fi 6, not so much for Wi-Fi 60. Wi-Fi 60 actually did fairly well, uh, at least for the downloads and for the uploads, it did drop, but this is typical for most mesh systems that I test. To find the true performance of this mesh system, I need a local speed test server. So I basically get rid of my ISP and the public speed test server from the equation, and I make my computer into the server, and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer, isolating the router so I can find out its true performance. And in the case of wired or wireless backhaul, where I should say and wireless backhaul, I go from Wi-Fi device to the secondary one, which then jumps to the primary one, which then goes to the server, and that's how I recorded the numbers. Now, if you guys wanna know more about this, I've done a video where I go into great detail, explaining how to do this. In fact, I even show you guys how to run your own speed test servers. So links down below if you guys are interested for that. We could see there's a huge increase in speed both for Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E. In fact, you'll notice Wi-Fi 6E is just a hair under gigabit speeds. The reason for that is because this mesh system only has up to gigabit ports. If it had a faster port, I've seen Wi-Fi 6E go all the way up to a little over 1800 megabits per second. So in theory, Wi-Fi 60 can even go faster. Now, looking at the wired backhaul numbers, we can see there's hardly a drop. It's basically identical to the single route configuration, which is what I would expect. And here is what's most impressive, which was the wireless backhaul. And it's almost the same speed as wired backhaul, which is very, very impressive, especially for a mesh system of this price. Now, range will vary based on location. So if you're in between floors, if you have a lot of thick walls, if you're in a building with a lot of other routers around, all of this stuff can, and most likely will, negatively impact your range. During my testing at 20 feet away, I'm inside my place, there's hardly a drop. At 50 feet away, this is when I'm outside and I'm still getting very good speeds. It takes me all the way up to 250 feet, which is pretty good 
considering the price of this thing. Now for setup and configuration, use the Dynalink app, which is available both on iOS and on Android, and it's pretty simple to set up. Now, once you set up, it does ask you to connect it in wireless backhaul originally. Uh, and then after setup, you can unplug it and plug it in via wired backhaul. And again, I would recommend power cycling both when you're doing this and then plug it back in. So in case your app freezes, this is most likely the culprit. So just as a heads up. And I'm hoping Dynalink updates their app in the future where it kind of just uh, takes account the situation and it doesn't even need to do that. So I'm hoping there's an update coming along that will even address this issue. Okay, so aside from that, the Dynalink app itself is a very nice clean interface and it's very limited in options, but it's done like this on purpose because if you want to customize more things, you go to its web interface, which gives you a lot more options there. Not as many as ASUS, but a decent number of options even gives you some VPN options as well. Now inside the app, it just gives you all the main stuff. So you could choose your Wi-Fi name, your guest Wi-Fi. And what's cool about this is that you can set up an internet of things, an IOT. Basically, if you have smart home devices like smart plugs or cameras or things of that nature that um, basically IOT devices, you can make a separate Wi-Fi for that and all of that can just connect to that Wi-Fi and you should be good to go. Now, is it worth getting these? Why or why not? Well, honestly, it depends on your situation. So right off the bat, I would say that this would be a pretty good fit for anyone with internet speeds of up to gigabit that's planning on using wired or wireless backhaul that wants some decent range out of this thing. But let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. And as always, smash that subscribe button. I have a whole bunch more mesh Wi Fi's coming out. In fact, there's going to be another super comparison that I'm going to do. But there's the Wise Mesh that's coming out. And I'm going to do the ASUS XT5 as well. And a whole lot more. And Wi Fi 7 is around the corner. So subscribe if you guys haven't already. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.